welcome to the Operant Pharmacy Federation, OPF powered by researchers for emerging innovation. Know the objective of OPF to perceive the aim of the pharmacy industry, to build up the strategies and systems to convey quality pharmaceutical research, to expedite the pharmacy specialist by providing them a platform to discuss over various issues related to the pharmaceutical research, to respect and honor the researchers for their commitment to pharmaceutical research works, to arrange the best national and international pharma-based conventions in both India and abroad to spread the familiarity with the pharmacy profession and training and research on the general public by organizing different camps, seminars, conferences, meetings, courses, workshops and so on to provide information related to the job openings and fellowship for pharma researchers to make the research papers accessible to the individuals over the web, to distribute magazines and periodicals identified with community pharmacy, pharmacy education, research and health sciences, to create and refresh the database registry of pharmacy institutions and other association members to impart a higher level of education and training to the members who are preparing to get fully engaged with the pharmaceutical profession, to embrace, continue or advance logical and specialized research, investigations and trial of the numerous types in pharmaceutical and other allied sciences to help in the promotion and advancement of pharmaceutical and biomedical study in all facets. We are always here for you. Join today with the Operant Pharmacy Federation. For more information, write us on info at opf.org.in. Our doors always open for you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome you all to national webinar on occasion of World Environment Day, caring for nature, caring for ourselves. As the world battles the COVID-19 pandemic among the environment disasters, including cyclones, earthquakes, and floods, it's now more than that everyone needs to come together and support environment initiatives, even in the smallest way possible. It could mean starting as small as saving water at home, disposing waste by sorting out waste and dye waste. So on this prestigious occasion, Operating Pharmacy Federation organizing a national web conference on insights to combat COVID-19 with techno nanotechnology and its environmental impact. Nanotechnology in improved prevention, detection, treatment of COVID-19 and thoughts on the environmental impacts nanosensors are already a reality showing great ability to detect bacteria and viruses at very low concentrations and thus born clinicians even before symptoms have shown or on patients with low viral loads researchers have been investigating the potential of using nanoparticles to treat bacterial and viral infections for few years now. Gold nanoparticles, for example, are made to attach the virus such as Ebola and influenza by heating the particles with certain infrared wavelengths. The nanoparticles can they destroy the structure of virus also. Nanoparticles can be used to deliver drugs as well. All those things Today we discuss with our speaker, Dr. Gita Agdawar. Let me take opportunity to introduce all 
और कीनोट स्पीकर डॉक्टर गीता अग्रवाल डॉक्टर गीता अग्रवाल इज वर्किंग एज प्रोफेसर ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिक्स इन दिल्ली फार्मास्यूटिकल साइंसेज एंड रिसर्च यूनिवर्सिटी इंडिया फर्स्ट फार्मास्यूटिकल यूनिवर्सिटी न्यू दिल्ली She is the secretary of Dipsu Innovation and Incubation Foundation and director of Precisio Cold Chain Solution Private Limited. Dr. Agarwal has more than 16 years of rich experience in academics, administrative functions, and research. Her research area of interest include targeted drug delivery with nano carriers, transdermal topical drug delivery, exploitation of modification natural polymers. of lipids for enhancement of bioavailability of poorly soluble drugs cosmeceuticals she has completed six industry sponsored projects and working on various research projects she has successfully developed innovative and affordable validated cold chain shipping solution under a startup project funded by incubation foundation She has filed five, seven patents within three years. Her research products are commercialized, which includes hyperprotein nutraceuticals, precisio validated shipping solutions. Doctor Agarwal has been awarded for launch of first oral intradilatory hyperprotein supplement for kidney dialysis and critical care patients in collaboration with. LT by Sri Anil Bajaj ji honorable late governor and Sri Manish Sisodia deputy chief minister of government of Delhi Dr Agrawal had more than 120 publications in journals of repute in her credit she is the auditor author of five books and 10 book chapters more than 60 research articles extracts are presented and published in various national and international conferences seminars she had been resource person for many national and international conferences she had also supervised more than 40 mpharm students and 3 phd students for year research projects dr gita had worked as a scientific convener of national conferences and organizing secretary for fdp ch worked as a convener of academic planning and monitoring committee research coordinator academic coordinator me- member secretary bos coordinator for phd and finishing schools she is involved in university industry liaison and contributed in placement of more than 300 students in multinational and national companies and training of more than 400 students within 4 years previously she had worked in university school of pharmaceutical sciences right to bahera university mohalli punjab as associate professor and department head right to right institute of pharma pharmacy and iisf college of pharmacy moga i heartily welcome you ma'am on behalf of organizing committee please welcome ma'am and continue today's session yeah thank you dr vikram for your kind words uh, first of all i would like to thank operating pharmacy federation for inviting me on this platform and i am happy to see students as well as faculty who is attending this uh, webinar today and uh, as dr vikram has already told we need to think the measures to pre- to protect our environment and uh, today as per discussion uh, we are going to discussing various insights to combat covid covid 19 with nanotechnology and its environmental impact we all know that from the start of 2020 global health is facing critical situation because of outburst of covid 19 and uh, it is unfortunate that till now we are not available with any medicine any vaccine any map to cure it to prevent from the challenge of covid 19 so now it is a medical unmet need and it requires attention of all the researchers from all over the world to come up with a solution or to use the existing technologies including nanotechnology to develop solution as a prevention or for treatment and diagnosis of the disease 
so i would start with the covid 19 and uh, we the main focus of today's discussion is basics of covid 19 and corona virus and what is the unmet need of today's outburst covid 19 pandemic what are the opportunities in the area of nanotechnology in prevention treatment as well as diagnosis of the disease and what are the problems of nanotoxicity and how can we prevent nanotoxicity and how can we prevent the environment from this toxic burden and what are the opportunities for our students and researchers in this area so it is uh, there is a need to understand that if we talk about covid 19 first of all we should know this is not the first pandemic nor it is going to be the last one so we have already seen we have already faced various pandemics whether it is spanish flu in 1912 or it, it may be hong kong flu in 1968 sars corona virus disease in 2002 and in 2012 mers corona virus so there are various kinds of viruses and pandemics that we have faced and we have came out of it so with positive note that if there are problems we are having opportunities to and we can come out of it and we need to work together in a collaborative manner and we need to explore our technologies our expertise to to find out the various solutions so if we if we want to work on it first of all we need to completely understand the problem if we see corona virus of course it is having the various proteins four kinds of proteins we all know we are listening to various social medias as well as news channels as well as we are reading articles there are spike proteins membrane proteins and well proteins nucleocapsid protein and the main culprit here is the you can say spike protein which attaches to the host cell as well as infuses with it and it enters into the human cell uses its genetic machinery and replicates itself many times and causes the infection we all know about it but what we can do so we need to uh, treat it we need to destroy it either by destroying the spike protein the main culprit or by destroying the rna which is causing the replication and causing the infection in the body as it is a rna based virus most of the genetic information if we see is carried out by dna but in this case it is a rna virus similarly we have seen various other corona viruses like sars mers they are also rna based viruses and we are also moving on the same line and we are finding out we are trying to find out the treatments we are find we are exploring various options from the prevention as well as for the treatment of this covid 19 uh it is also important for us to understand why there is outburst of covid 19 we all know that it is infectious but it is highly infectious infection is not only from person to person but because of the air droplets because of the surfaces contamination and it can reach our body through even through the surfaces various researchers they have worked on it and we are having some of uh, or you can say much data available with us on which basis we can do our research we can think of it that the, res the researchers have already told us various things if we see these surfaces it it is clear from the slide you can see that uh, the virus can remain on various surfaces up to 5 days even some of the surfaces it has been noted it can remain up to 9 days so we can see that copper is a surface in which it remains here for the minimum period of time that is 4 hours it, uh, it it shows that copper has the capability to inactivate the virus it is destroying the virus or killing the virus from this we can uh, think of using copper and the, some of the work has already been done on the copper as an as the antiviral surface or antiviral coating and it has shown us good results and if you see the pandemic update we know that more more than 200 countries it has been spread out and uh, more than 60 sex lakh people they are affected with covid 19 and more than 3.3 
1.8 lakhs people they are died because of this covid 19 so there this again uh, seems that there is urgent medical need and so from the symptom point of view we are also coming out with various other uh, symptoms are there that should be taken care previously we saw that only the sore throat difficult breathing or the fever for the symptoms for covid 19 but if you see today uh, the, the doctors the clinicians they have came out that even the nasal congestion muscle pain tiredness dry cough it may be the cause of or it may be the symptom of covid 19 and we should be very Mm, attentive for all kind of symptoms and for the covid combating covid 19 of course the we are uh, the government has made various strategies even at the individual basis we are following we are taking precautions whether using gloves masks or maintaining social distancing even the government is trying to provide all the medical care to all the people who need it they are providing all the testing support and the treatment support industries they have come forward to provide all the essential services to the people but if you see this is this is seems only the short term strategy we need to think again for the long term strategy as i have already told that this is not the first nor the last pandemic so of course we need to challenge this covid 19 along with it we need to work on the future in future pandemics or future diseases also we should come out with the solutions that could be effective at later terms we need to analyze the data we need to extrapolate the data we need to work on the existing drugs that is repurposing of drugs for this kind of outburst and we should be prepared for further infections or any other problem similarly we need to explore the existing technologies and we should see that how we can use the existing one whether in terms of treatment prevention diagnosis etc for any kind of these disease so this is this should be our long term plan and we should collaborate uh, internationally as well as nationally to come out with solution so we need to understand that what are the needs what are the unmet needs of course we know we need a proper treatment we need prevention we need diagnosis what what are the insights into the awareness prevention treatment and diagnosis of covid 19 because if we know what are the insights only then we will be able to work a whole you can see awareness that is social distancing we are maintaining government ngos and pharmacy persons they are involved they are awareing the people and how to maintain hygiene and other make to take other measures but again there is urgent need that artificial intelligence should come forward the technology should be there and we should be able to having such kind of robots or any drones which can help us to maintain social distancing at the workplace so that the people they need not to come close to each other we need such kind of technologies in the hospitals so that doctors they need no, they need not to touch the patient they should get the information even at a proper distance similarly when we come to prevention prevention if we thought about prevention the things that comes to our mind first is the of course preventive measures like personal protective equipments including masks second are the disinfectants and sanitizers that we are continuously using throughout the day third are the immunity boosters that we are taking every most of the people they are using kadas or some uh, herbal infusions at home and to prevent asel from the infection but again there are problems if we see clearly then we can see that if we are using mask what should we need to think whether they are okay in using we can see that the viruses even can accumulate on the mask on the gloves on the gowns etc or any kind of ppe and there is need to develop such kind of antiviral coatings that can kill the virus or that can 
you know able to let us know that now your mask is infected with virus so what can help us in that way similarly sanitizers and disinfectants we are using but again they are alcohol based they are they are uh, not so safe for the skin we are feeling dryness and some allergy problems on the hands whenever we are using again it is a unmet need to develop proper solution for that if we talk about immunity boosters immunity boosters we are taking but they are not standardized we are not knowing that what amount of this immunity booster we have to take we don't know how we can give it to children how the geriatric patients they can take it so again there is unmet need in all the areas if we talk about treatment treatment we are working on the vaccines as well as our researchers they have they are also working on repurposing of the drugs but again if we are working on the repurposing of the drugs till now we are knowing that remdesivir as useful lopinavir ritonavir that can be given hydroxychloroquine of course they are available but what about other drugs the research in this area should be fast and we should also come out with the solutions that these kind of drugs that can be repurposed that are effective for the target they should be given in proper way they should be targeted the dose should be lesser so that there should be lesser side effects similarly in diagnosis there are rt pcr type tests there are serological tests they are available and of course these these are done and people are and doctors they are using the diagnostic labs they are using it but whenever we talk about there are false negative results so what can be the solution are there any technologies available which can help us in meeting these unmet needs whether in terms of prevention treatment and diagnosis and we need to work upon it so uh, once we understand the needs the problems only then we will be able to get the solution as a researcher so uh, i am taking this nanotechnology as a measure to come out of this problem and to tackle these challenges or to meet the unmet need why because nanotechnology we all know it has already shown its potential for drug delivery as well as for diagnosis if we talk about cancer anti fungal pain management eye diseases this nanotechnology is already available similarly for the diagnostic purposes nanotechnology is available and it is helping us are uh, to come out of it to provide us solutions in various other kind of problems so why not we can use this technology in this area also nanotechnology is always useful because the main consideration of it is the size it is having such a small size that it is much thinner than the even a human hair we can see a uh, nanotechnology whenever a product is uh, uh, made in the nano size that is up to 100 point to 100 nanometer at least one of the dimension should be up to 100 nanometer the physico chemical properties of the metal changes it helps to permeate the drug it helps to metabolize the drug in different way in the body so it can overall reduce the toxicity as well as if we see nanotechnology could be tox uh, could be cost effective or is cost effective overall because it is reducing the adverse effects and the cost of the adverse effects that can be reduced similarly it is reducing the dose and it is patient compliant so this area is need, need to be explored much in this and this uh, outburst of covid-19 pandemic and the researchers they are also working on it but now it is need that everyone should come forward who is working who is expertise in this area this uh, this is you can see that nanotechnology has shown its potential in all the areas whether they are uh, automobiles whether there is an energy consumption textile industry or other construction products along with medicines biotechnology products and diagnostic kits so and we are also aware that this has various advantages uh, that have been created 
with nanotechnology, including the target-oriented uh, delivery of the doses form, including uh, reducing the negative effects of drugs and surgical procedures. In, it also uh, causes the high sensitivity of the diagnostic tools and it reduces the mortality rate in return. So these all advantages again motivate us to again see into the insights of nanotechnology also so that we can come forward with a great solution, with an effective solution for this kind of pandemics. This is the slide that uh, I want attention of all of you that uh, nano, if we talk about nano drug delivery, it is not limited only to the nanoparticles. The opportunities, they are expanding. If you see micro emulsions, nano emulsions, they are not only the you know, lipid systems that are available. Now we are available with the self micro emulsifying drug delivery systems, even the solid form of self-emulsifying drug delivery system that are available as the marketed product and that are helping us for the better absorption of the drug molecule for uh, for the lymph through the lymphatic pathway they can prevent the first pass metabolism of the drug similarly if we talk about liposomes thermosensitive liposomes they are available in the market the even the uh, liposomes for the pulmonary drug delivery have been developed and are in the clinical trial stage for the amica scene if we see the nanoparticles now we are having targeted nanoparticles people are working on it pestle texel nanoparticles are in the market they have been used for treating various types of cancers if we talk about vaccines Nano formulations of vaccines are also available in the market for the influ influenza or hepatitis B. We are available with the technologies like 3D printing. The anti-epileptic drug is available as the 3D print doses form. Similarly, gene drug delivery is there. And even uh, uh, there is a uh, marketed formulation that has been marketed in 2019. It is a liposomal technology that they have used this liposomal technology for the delivery of the gene that is RRNA. So these kind of opportunities are expanding in the area of nanotechnology. We have to select the technology. We have to work on the in the on the basics of this technology and we can find out the solutions. As I have already discussed, and we are continuously stressing on it, that nanotechnology is useful. So it, how it can be useful? It is useful for prevention because we can develop some type of antiviral coatings that can be put on the PPE, mask, etc. Nanocarrier based disinfectants and sanitizers, we can develop Immunity boosters can be developed with the help of nanocarriers for better absorption and enhanced bioavailability and reduced effect, side effects. Similarly, if we talk about treatment, delivery of existing drugs that are effective for this COVID-19 or vaccines or phytopharmaceuticals, they can be delivered by using nanoparticles. Nowadays, Ayush, as well as various industries, research institutions, academic institutions, they are working on phytopharmaceuticals. So this kind of system, whenever we are developing, it is not limited to only one drug or one vaccine, but it can be utilized for any kind of active molecule that could be of help in treatment. If we see the diagnosis, nano bio devices, nano bio sensors, they could be utilized for the rapid diagnosis of the disease. And it is it is not a very difficult task because we have used, already used this technology and further we can work on it. If we come uh, along now again on the prevention, that what is the prevention and what, what are the challenges for prevention as we are using PPE kits, face masks, etc. So we can see there are so many challenges. So what are these challenges? First of all, we need to understand whenever we are using masks, they are not fit properly to everyone. 
because the size may vary and it is the r of uniform size it may be loose to someone it may be fit to other one similarly if we are using this mask what happens at the end of the the viruses may accumulate on the surface and even they may infiltrate into the nose or your mouth so what being the use of this kind of using mask so there is again need so why can't we think think of some antiviral coatings that already been in a development stage and we can further evaluate them we can further work on them and could we think of some uh, stimuli sensitive antiviral coatings stimuli sensitive means whenever uh, why some virus is there on the surface the color may change or it may show some sign that there is infection of virus so these kind of points they should be pondered they should be brainstormed similarly if we are using these kits how we are disposing them are the aprons and gowns which we are using they are safe so could we think of using some of other fabrics which are having antiviral properties like the copper fabric we have already seen how the copper surface can deactivate or inactivate this virus so could we think of it we need to think and we need to work upon it as we are saying we need to work upon it some of the work that is already going on and some of the uh, startups some of the companies and some of the uh, research students they have developed some of the these kind of antiviral coatings also if we see anti about we talk about antiviral coatings or uh, nano antiviral coatings then there are various nano materials that could be useful uh first of all we all aware about the uh, nano silver nano silver is having virucidal effect it has already been used for various viruses including hiv including hepatitis virus but uh, the how it is uh, effective in the corona virus there is further need to work upon of course some people they have used the silver for and uh, for covid also but again there is much need to work in a, uh, on a on a larger area in in this for the nano silver similarly if we talk about nano gold gold is also having antiviral properties and it has shown its effect against influenza virus it has also been seen in one of the paper that whenever silver is coated with uh, with some coating like pvp the effect enhances similarly if gold is coated or activated by sialic acid it shows its more effect against bacteria so how we can enhance the effect what kind of materials they can be combined together for better effect and better antiviral activity we need to explore if we talk about titanium dioxide it has also shown its antiviral effect but it has been seen when it is used with silver it shows its enhanced effect otherwise the effect of alone titanium dioxide is not up to mark so nano copper it is the cheapest one and it is it seems to be most effective for covid 19 till now and we can explore it in a on a large uh, manner and uh, this copper it has also shown its effect against uh, viruses like influenza so we seeing that it is having good potential for uh, preparing various kinds of coatings antiviral nano coatings for the covid 19 prevention also similarly cerium oxide silica graphene zinc oxide fullerenes they are also have shown their antiviral activity even carbon nanotubes they have shown their activity but if we see carbon nanotubes they are again the concentration uh, based antiviral effect and we need to optimize the concentration of these kind of nano materials also and those two things the researchers they can work on different kinds of nano material which are available with us and we can find out what is the research results that are that we have obtained till now and what we can do further of course whenever we talk about these kind of inorganic nano materials there may be some issues of uh, environmental 
safety tox nano toxicity etc so how can we prevent them how can we minimize them so there are various solutions either we can combine them we can aggregate them with some organic nanoparticles or even the nanofibers they have shown that nanofibers are having good capacity to entrap the viruses and if we are using these kind of nano materials in the form of nanofibers they can kill the viruses also the beauty of nanofibers is that it is having a large surface area large pore size a uh, large pore pore number sorry and small pore size which can entrap the viruses okay so this kind of nanofiber could be a help in forming a nano antiviral coating korean advanced institute of science and technology they have also developed a nano filter in their lab and what is the main advantage of their product is it is washable it is laundry safe and even after 20 washing it can be reusable and it can entrap the viruses and it can kill the viruses so this is the uh, this is the uh, product that has been developed and uh, it it is in testing stage similarly university of houston if you see they are also commercializing various nano technologies and they have developed a hydrophobic coating that is again it is nano based hydrophobic coating and it also protects the virus from infection if you see in india even iit delhi it has came out with, with various uh, anti nano viral coatings and which can be applied on the mask or the respirators etc even re researchers at university of central florida they are were they are also creating these kind of anti viral nano coatings which can kill the viruses within a second so this becomes important they are using these kind of nano materials also and uh, the even the researchers they are in india we are also trying various research institutions they are working on it but the main thing that we need to understand that what is the maximum activity how we could enhance the activity how we could make it stimuli sensitive how we could see that if it is infected uh, how it should be disposed of these point needs to be take care these uh, you can see in this slide this is again very interesting that the products that are available in the market and they are having these nano base coatings uh, one of the meta mask you can see this is italian design and it is with a new zealand innovation they have also used nano fibers and a nano fiber it, you can see that it is a 25 km length of nano fiber which has been compacted in the area less than 1 mm thick so you can see that how it will it can be of help in entrapping the virus or filtering out the virus similarly there is a technology or a or a mask that is respilon virus killer mask is available the main point of this mask it is available in different sizes for adults as well as junior and the name of junior and this is made with the help of copper oxide that is the coating is made up of copper oxide it is impregnated with the copper oxide and it has shown 99.9% filtration efficiency that is it can remove 99.9% of the virus of size 0.3 so this is the uh, main thing of this product and another is nano head 3d printed mask you can see they have utilized 3d technology 3d printing technology this is also in the name of copper 3d and they have used the again copper oxide for this kind of mask for the antiviral activity if you see another technology by vertex they have not developed this alone fiber but they have developed the technologies that could be useful for the breathable films or the mask this this is again nano based technology they have came out similarly sono mask sono mask is again antimicrobial reusable fabric it is dual layer 
and here the zinc oxide is used as antimicrobial action and in gc application we can see that this is a face mask which have used graphene and they have used the electric charge to repel the viruses so overall uh, the various nanomaterials whether it is graphene zinc oxide copper oxide it have, they have been used and different companies they have came out with different products by using these kind of nano materials and these products are in the market but they are not able to fill the demand fill the demand and we also require better masks better pp than the available in the market if you see this nano technology is not limited for the nano antiviral coatings or the for the mask ppe kits etc but even the disinfectants and sanitizers they could be are uh, made with the help of this nanotechnology today we are using alcohol based uh, disinfectants and uh, sanitizers uh, but you can see one of the startup in pune they have developed aqueous based silver solution solution and it is uh, made from its uh, nano silver side technology and it is help to disinfect and uh, the hands as well as the surfaces similarly even the iran have uh, one of the laboratory in iran they have produced a water based disinfectant solution using this nano technology so uh, it is not a limited one this technology is having potential and we can explore it in different fields including the prevention one this is again the example uh, that i am sharing with you that there are various startup products that have came out as a covid 19 solutions and uh, we always talk about that this is a problem but again this may be the opportunity for us that we are developing technologies our startups they are becoming strengthened they are being funded by the government by the you know, industry for for carrying out further and for developing these kind of solutions one of the product you can see nano safe nano safe is uh, again antimicrobial protective fabric that has been used for the infectious diseases and it can kill the viruses another coverage mask it is a three ply mask it is having a 98% filtering efficiency similarly another one that you can see one of the innovation go assure and uh, they have created a fully automated hand hygiene device that could be used without water and it is a push type disinfectant push and get your hand disinfected so this is the technology that has been available from one of the startup that is microgo another uh, you can see naso filter again interesting technology that has been there with the nano clean global private limited they have developed nano filters that could be put in the nasal orifice that will prevent the entry of virus bacteria pollen grains aerosols similarly i using they have came out with smart stethoscope which is uh, with a bluetooth and it they will be helpful to the doctors for examining their patients they need not to touch the patient so these kind of innovations are there and we can further elaborate and we can work on it at a low uh, no you can again see that what kind of nano systems are useful whether it is silver based copper based zinc based etc nano materials are used and they have came out uh, with these kind of technologies as the startup products this was the prevention that i was discussing prevention whether in terms of using masks or sanitizers disinfectants etc now if we come to treatment again uh, the nanotechnology has shown its credential and then you can see and nova novavax is a company they have created a recombinant protein nanoparticle technology they have used the corona virus spike protein to create antigen and they they are uh you know with this technology they are available they have developed and now they have entered into clinical trial phase similarly the company moderna that is you already know they are also carrying out to be this research for the vaccine using mrna therapeutics but they are also optimizing lipid nanoparticle technology 
for increasing the efficiency of the vaccine. Similarly, in India, the company Zyder Serum Institute, Bharat Biotech, Indian Immunological, etc., they are working on vaccine. And sidewise, they are also working on various nanotechnology solutions for the effective technology because uh, it uh, may be there that we can come out with vaccine soon. But again, we will be in need of systems that could target the uh, overall uh, used one drugs or the newer vaccines to reach the target because uh, nanotechnology has the potential to reach the anatomically unaccessible targets. So this will help us, which can reduce the adverse effects as well as enhance the efficiency or efficacy of the drug. These are the recent developments you can see uh, in the again in the field of treatments. Uh, Minnesota, USA, after laboratory, one of the company predictive oncology, they have collaborated with Dr. Daniel Carter and uh, they are using novel nanoparticle vaccine platform uh, for developing a solution. Similarly, uh, Novavax has also collaborated with Nucleus Network of Australia for carrying out its clinical trial. As we have already seen that they are using the spike protein based antigens uh, to, to, uh, to formulate, to develop the vaccine and for the clinical trials they have collaborated with the um, nucleus network. So in this way, uh, again, we need to that even if we are working in isolation, then we are not in use. We need to collaborate. We need to collaborate with our colleagues, with other institutions, with industry, and with government or internationally to come out with better one. If we see the diagnosis, so diagnosis again, the nanotechnology has shown its uh, effect in the diagnosis nano gold phase COVID-19 test it can be useful and it is able to you know get the results within less than one minute similarly companies in Korea as well Zurich they are working on it they have developed some of the solution either on the graphene based biosensors or plasmonic photothermal sensing so these kind of developments are already going on from the from these bases we could also plan our research projects. One of our PhD students uh, has uh, compiled the data on the patents uh, that are being filed on the coronavirus. And it was uh, again uh, very surprising to see that more than 9,000 patents have been filed all over from 2001 to 2020. I'm talking about overall coronavirus because it may be SARS, it may be MERS or anyone. So out of these, uh, approximately 5% of the patents have been filed in the field of nanotechnology. To, uh, and again, uh, another important fact that I would like to share with you that if you see India, India has filed 13 patents. And most of the patents, they have been uh, PCT filed or USPTO filed, or even China has filed 64 patents. So uh, even in these numbers, if you further analyze who has filed the patent and who has been assigned the pay, assign, who are being assigned for these patents, you will see most of the patents have been uh, assigned to research institutions, colleges, universities, whether it is a uh, fellows of Harvard College or University of California or Institute of California. So this, uh, this shows that research is going on in various research institutions, universities, colleges. And now it is, the, it is the best time that we can come out, we can collaborate, we can show our research because we can innovate ourselves, we can brainstorm ourselves and we can come out solution to collaborate with others and to help the society. So this is all the data that has been compiled and uh, uh, it shows that uh, the, the people are working in the area but there is much need uh, to work more in this area. Uh, now we were all talking about the nanotechnology, how it has helped in prevention, how it can help in treatment, diagnosis, but whenever we talk about 
nanotechnology another important factor that comes to mind that is what is the environmental impact of this nanotechnology as today's environment day and we are talking that we should prevent the uh, environment burden we should remove weight we should take care of our environment so how as a formulation scientist we can think it uh, how we get uh, what kind of measures we can take so that we can uh, you know make the burden less to our environment if we see these nano products there are both the positive as well as, well as negative sides for the environment by nanotechnology nano based formulations nano materials they are helpful to clean the air as well as they are helpful to clean the water they have been used and the research but whenever we come up came for the you know incidental release of uh, nano formulations into the environmental or the engineered products that have been released in the environment as waste disposal they may be harmful they may be harmful for land they may be harmful for air as well as water and the microorganisms and uh, living beings present over there they may be they may die or it may be toxic to them even the study on silver nano silver has been done it has been seen that it is biocidal and it can accumulate in the food chain and it can cause resistance to various microbes so that's why uh, we uh, we can think that how these nano formulations or nano products they are going into the environment it is not only that we are disposing them only then they go into the into the environment but even during the formulation during the production during the use of nano formulation or of course whenever we need to dispose them they go into the environment it can, most of the time waste products they are disposed either by landfill or waste waste water management or incineration in all the ways they can go into the water or air or land so we need to make that we need to make ensure that these nano products they should not be toxic whenever they are disposed into uh, into the environment so that it should not accumulate in the food chain they should not cause resistance to various microbes they should not be harmful to the life of the uh, living beings which are residing which are in the water or air or on the land so it these kind of measures they should be taken now it is the point that how could we take these kind of measures what we can think about it uh, first of all if i talk about regulations in india uh, under the dst nano mission they have released guidelines for the use of nano uh, nano formulations during research as well as during production uh, similarly they have uh, there are also guidelines for use of nano products in the agriculture recently uh, the eva guidelines on the evaluation of nano pharmaceuticals have been released by dpt along with cdsco and uh, icmr uh, even the european countries usfda they have regulatory uh, strong regulatory bodies and they have guidelines but the problem is quantification of the nano toxicity is becomes become, uh, is difficult to measure it is a stand alone proposal because nano formulation they work differently so they this is a, again the analysis they may it may be challenging and these are the challenges of regulations that we need to work upon if we talk that we have to reduce the environmental burden by nano formulations what kind of things we need to think upon first what kind of nano formulation we are selecting suppose it is a inorganic nanoparticle it is a organic nanoparticle it has been observed from the study that organic nanoparticles they are less toxic than the inorganic ones or if we want to use inorganic they can be combined with the organic one the polymer selected they should be safe raw material selected should be safe we should use less organic solvents we should use the methods by which less of organic solvents can be used even you could uh, it could be of your help that whenever we are drying the formulation nanoparticles the method of drying also affects the nanotoxicity 
like most of the time we are going for the lyophilization spray drying or electrolyzing so in all the ways method of drying will also decide that what kind of crystallinity is in the product what kind of uh, uh, toxicity is it is giving so that can be measured and that we need to add in our study if uh, we are uh, using the nano pharmaceuticals we all know that they should be you know packaged in a cold chain they should be transported in cold chain because they are uh, they are uh, uh, you can say stable at a particular temperature that is 2 to 8 uh, most of the nano pharmaceuticals so uh, whenever we are using this cold chain solutions or shipment or packaging again it, it is again the burden to environment so we need to work upon these kind of uh, these kind of uh, things that how can we reduce the burden to environment by uh, using the safe nano materials by using the environment friendly packaging solutions by using the methods of drying which can uh, which can not be harmful to the drug and which can not change the crystallinity of the drug so these kind of measures we need to work upon and as a researcher we need to concentrate on these points also again uh, i would like to mention that uh, if we be see that uh, even the change of shape of nanoparticle you know that will also a uh, help to reduce the nano toxicity because by changing the shape uh, it may be more uh, effectively bound to the target or even if you are doing surface modification it can remain in the body for longer period of time so less dose will be required and less nano material will be required again there will be less nano toxicity overall to the environment we can change the surface charge we can use some biomimetic polymers as we have already discussed we can use some kind of safe coatings like uh, pvp coating on the silver nanoparticle or on the gold nanoparticles they could also reduce the nano toxicity so everything matters whether it is the size shape coating or any kind of biomimetic polymer or other kind of surface modifications by including some hydrophilic polymers like pegylation or coloxamer coating so these kind of things uh, whenever we are knowing the basics and we are work, uh, we are working from the start then a researcher will be able to come out with product to reduce the environmental burden also due to nano toxicity so these are the main points that we need to discuss so whenever we are working on the formulation if you see as a researcher or as a student there are various or uh, research opportunities now whether in uh, making the mask coatings or antiviral materials uh, nano carriers for immunity boosters robotics vaccines uh, delivery with the help of nanotechnology and existing drugs delivery with the help of nanotechnology and to make the environment safe or clean with the help of nanotechnology so these are the opportunities we uh, which are available today for all our researchers for the pharmacy students uh, you can also work with the uh, you know other students who are specialized in the areas and you can come out with the different products there are various funding opportunities for students and faculty they are also available but there are uh, you know these fundings may be in the form of uh, government funding for the projects or startup projects and if you see dbt dst icmr and uh, there are other even international platforms they are providing funding on the fast track and if any of the student or researcher or faculty is having even a single idea or can innovate in this area they can explore and they can get, get the funds and uh, because a single idea can give rise to a startup or you can say innovation so these are kind of um, funding opportunities which are available and there is urgent need uh, for these kind of antiviral coatings uh, that uh, need to develop for even you could also collaborate with the industries and industries are ready to fund uh, fund the researchers for coming out with these kind of nano products and uh, it is going similarly 
again uh, this is one of the uh, on the last slides that uh, you can see already uh, more than 200 projects they have been funded and uh, people researchers they are working in different areas including ppe testing kits sanitization surveillance and other things and uh, these are uh, if these projects are going in academic institutes i'm sure they will come out as either as the technology transfer products or uh, as a startup projects so we are very hopeful that we will get the solution soon and nanotechnology as a as an existing potential technology is going to help us in this area uh, this is uh, the this is one of my project that we are doing it at the dipsu and this pro product is being launched and uh, we have also developed uh, one of the validated cold chain shipping solution and uh, that uh, dr vikram has also mentioned uh, we, we this solution actually it is a packaging solution and it has been developed for the formulations which where there is need to uh, transport them at a particular temperature and this product is uh, very affordable and uh, it it has been the first product that has been developed as per indian climatic conditions for the domestic transport purpose and you can see we have uh, developed various sizes of the product if you need to carry small sample you can use small box and if you need to carry more product you can use big uh, big packet similarly the coolings which have been used they are customized and we are we are try we have tried to make it environment friendly so that less burden to the environment should be there but of course we are further working on the materials also which could be environment friendly and which could help to reduce the burden even during the transportation and packaging of these nano pharmaceuticals so i and i would like to say at the end that to uh, innovate yourself and work together and collaborate to work in this area there are so many opportunities and you can come out with various solutions so again good luck to everyone and uh, thank you dr vikram again thank you so much ma'am for sharing your wonderful knowledge on nanotechnology on uh, impact on environment also now this session is open for audience audience then uh, they can ask the questions they can drop questions in the uh, comment box so we can write your questions uh, to dr gita agarwal yeah sure sure ma'am first question yeah. yes first question says from salicha tiwari ma'am does you use nanotechnology fibers in mask and pp pose health risk to the various various you can see on on also on your screen ma'am uh, yes. question on your screen i am not able to actually again reach to so i couldn't stop could i stop share uh, Tab and all time no table to move some. Yeah, sure. Okay, I'm not able to see the various uh, points, questions. So okay, I I could answer. i could answer it the question uh, if we talk about uh, nano fibers of course they are using nano materials but uh, they are not going to be harmful to it because nano fiber will be fixed on the outer side and it is not totally closed it is a like of spider web in which viruses can be trapped and they can be killed they are better as compared to if we are simply using the mask and uh, nano fibers they will protect you from further infection and uh, accumulation of the viruses on the surfaces which can further infiltrate into the nose into the mouth so they are going to be helpful for us but of course we need to uh, identify that what kind of nano material we could use uh, for this um, uh, because uh, 
nano if we are using nano material as i have already told you copper it is cheaper it is easily available we could replace silver with copper and for even if we talk about titanium dioxide we could use and then we can combine it with silver for the better effect it is only the choice of nano material and what kind of formulation methods you are going to use for making these nano fibers yes. the next question from gautam raj puri uh, he is want to ask about the use of hydrophilic and polymer in hydrophobic then what method is useful for filtering nano particles yes uh, this is a very good question uh, if the drug is hydrophilic and polymer is hydrophobic this is not the actually right thing we have to select the polymer as per the drug if the drug is hydrophilic then we have to select the polymers which should be compatible with the drug and we need to you know dissolve the drug in particular uh, polymer and then we have to mix most of the time the emulsification method or the you can say cross linking method polymerization method or the precipitation method is used for the formulation of nano particles and uh, the main the basic criteria of doing the, your formul any formulation is the selection of appropriate polymer as per the requirement of drug so we have to work on the literature and we have to find the polymer as per the drug only then you can go further it is not that we have to select only the hydrophobic polymer yeah uh, yes another another question. Question. yeah yes how can how can we dispose the articles made from nano material uh whenever we are talking about the nano materials uh, we have discussed they are not safe to the environment because they may cause some kind of uh, nano toxicity for the disposal there is requirement we can convert them into some kind of a safe uh, material like if you see uh, we talk about the you know treating the air pollution or water pollution there are again nano materials that could be useful they can entrap them they can you know uh, they can make them more safe with the help of some enzymes or some of the um, acid base reaction in the same way there there will be there are techniques are available that this nano material uh, if this is the nano material we can treat it with this solution and it could be disposed of again it will depend upon the type of nano material and another thing uh, we should take care even during the preparation we should use the minimum amount of the materials the organic solvents required uh, they should be kept minimal we should select the we should be able to select the methods in which least use of the organic solvents should be there so these are the various uh, methods that uh, we have to take care from the start so that we can come out with less waste and less disposal okay another question is by using the nanotechnology in pandemic condition cost and available of product is possible how is effective and compared with the normal product of course uh, mr selwan your question is right uh, whenever we talk about the cost that uh, whenever we are working on some technology the cost will rise uh, but it should be taken care that uh, overall if you are using uh, one mask daily and if you are if you can reuse your mask with the help of these antiviral coating and then the cost will not be much you know uh, if, uh, much uh, it will not much matter because uh, the co overall cost of the product will reduce uh, and uh, again i could add that it is also possible that these kind of specialized products could be useful for our health healthcare workers which are front line workers and they are more prone to infection so in this way overall we are not accounting for the cost only and whenever this technology will be fully developed uh, it will again uh, uh, you know will be helpful for you to reducing the cost again the same question i think uh, i have uh, answered it because uh, cost will overall overall cost will be reduced when the technology will be in full development at the start the cost will be more but at the end whenever there will be full use of technology the cost will come down and it will also depend upon the number of users who are using it but uh, sometimes the cost doesn't matter if it 
talking about the health who are taking care for us or you know where are the conditions are more uh, stringent or more uh, problematic in that case we need to take care and we have been we urgently need this kind of technology okay another question is does disposing of nanoparticles lead to threat of environment and decrease biodiversity so of course if they are not disposed in a proper way we are disposing the nano materials as such during the production the, whenever we are uh, uh, you know formulation making formulations in our lab or at the r&d level or in the industry if you are using uh, waste you are doing the waste you are just disposing them in the sink and even after use you are disposing them as such it will lead to the environment use so that's why it is important that as a pharmacy student or as a scientist as a researcher you should make aware the you should make aware the people that how it should be disposed of and all the guidelines should be followed for Now, uh, if any nanoparticles that enter into the cell, then it causes cancer or harm. So this is a diff very different question. Uh, I think uh, being a uh, being a researcher in the nanotechnology, I can say that uh, whenever a nanoparticle enter a cell, uh, it can ca cause cancer. It is not the case if we are taking it. Uh, if we are using the nanoparticle formulation, it has been designed. You know, nanoparticle whenever they are uh, used, they are of three types. one are natural nanoparticles then are incident uh, you can see release it may be natural it may be incidental or it may be engineered one if it is natural that is like whole can of fumes are there they are natural uh, nanoparticles uh, of course uh, if there is a nature is giving it may be some problematic another is incidental there may be some incident there may be some tragedy and it may cause harm whenever it is engineered by a researcher then it we engineer we make it in such a way that uh, it could be of use and it should not be uh, you know harmful to the human but of course whenever we make it the toxicity study that has to be done on the formulation uh, whenever any researcher is developing this kind of formulation so it is important to see all the toxicity to do all the toxic studies thank you ma'am sharing for your wonderful knowledge on uh, nanotechnology and its impact on environment and even more available for question answers they can drop their questions in comment box so we can guide to dr gita agrawal Okay, again for my startup, yes, we have developed the product. We are having two products till now that are uh, that have been launched, and we are uh, in talk with various companies uh, at this stage. And the product cost is uh, one of the product is uh, at uh, rupees seven fifty per box, and another is rupees six fifty per box. It is as per the box. And if there will be any query, you can come to my. institution or you can personally talk to me on my email also dr vikram can share my email id with, with you all if there will be any query you can any time talk to me regarding that if you see the market the cost is very much it is from 50 rupees 1500 to 3000 per box but we have developed it as per our requirement for domestic purpose and that's why it is made cost effective as well as it is somewhat environment friendly further we are working upon other options also. Thank you, ma'am, for uh, your sharing your views. 
थैंक यू डॉक्टर थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू एवरी वन फॉर पार्टिसिपेटिंग एंड टू वर्क इन दिस एरिया all the attendees note that the feedback link for webinar is showing on your screen you can check the scroll link for webinar feedback assessment is www.opf.org.in/national it is showing on your screen powered by researchers for emerging innovation know the objective of opf to perceive the aim of the pharmacy industry to build up the strategies and systems to conduct quality pharmaceutical research to expedite the pharmacy specialist by providing them a platform to discuss over various issues related to the pharmaceutical research to respect and honor the researchers for their commitment to pharmaceutical research works to arrange the best national and international pharma based conventions in both india and abroad to spread the familiarity with the pharmacy profession and training and research in the general public by organizing different camps seminars conferences meetings courses workshops and so on to provide information related to the job openings and fellowship for pharma researchers to make the research papers accessible to the individuals over the web to distribute magazines and periodicals identified with community pharmacy pharmacy education research and health sciences to create and refresh the database registry of pharmacy institutions and other association members to impart a higher level of education and training to the members who are preparing to get fully engaged with the pharmaceutical profession to embrace continue or advance logical and specialized research 
investigations and trial of the numerous types in pharmaceutical and other allied sciences to help in the promotion and advancement of pharmaceutical and biomedical study in all facets. We are always here for you. Join today with Open Pharmacy Federation. For more information, write us on info at the red opf.org.n. Our doors always open for you. Thank you.